Mm, mm, mm. I was expecting that to happen. Didn't know it was going to happen this early. But okay, we moving forward. Madison, Benny, Jeffrey, David. Let's go ahead and wrap all them up into one. Now, Madison, you still there. You still there caring for David. David didn't upset his back, trying to defend his no good behind son from this nut. But he ended up getting shot in the head. And Jeffrey, I hope you live and I hope you finally learn your lesson. That's it and that's all. I really hope you catch on now. You done had your daddy disturb his whole entire back. Got his back bleeding, needing taken care of, just for your no good behind, and you not listening to nobody, and now you didn't got shot in the head over this same situation, Dave Jeffrey. Who I can hope you learn your lesson. I don't want you dead. Well, yes, I do want you dead, dead. That's the only way you gonna learn your lesson, Jeffrey. I hope you learned your lesson finally. Really, I hope you learned your lesson. I kind of want you dead. Maybe that'll teach you a lesson or hurt enough to teach you that you ain't going to change that man. Ain't no changing that man. That man been a nut all his life. It ain't no changing him. It's not no rearranging him. You can't fix something that's already been damaged their whole life. You, on the other hand, want to risk your whole entire life getting bruised, beat, and battered by this man. Now this man playing Russian roulette with you and his life and end up shooting both of y'all in the head. So that's what, that's, that's what happened. He ended up shooting both of y'all in the head. See, Jeffrey, I tried to warn you. Your daddy tried to warn you. Madison tried to warn you. He didn't got beat, bruised, and battered. No thanks to you. Because he don't know when to give it up and move on. Jeffrey, like I said, you got a degree. You do this for a living. You can't save them all. Some of them you got to let fall on their face. He, on the other hand, well, Mr. Officer, he already done fell on his face several times, and it ain't no saving that one. I'm sorry you had to get hurt. I hope you ain't dead, dead, but more than likely, you dead. If he shot you in the right part of your head, you gonna survive with some brain damage or a battle wound for the rest of your life. Maybe a lesson learned for you, I hope, but... Woo, that was some wild mess. So, like, I can't even much believe you. <laughs> Madison tried to save you. Everybody tried to save you. Didn't want a hand. I ain't got nothing for you. But let's move along from that. Veronica, I'm going to need for you to pick a struggle. Like I said, I've been screaming this and hollering this for how long now? You still haven't picked a struggle yet? I'm going to need for you to pick a struggle. David then slapped you and beat you up where he just slapped you. You think he then choked you out or something or made you lose conscious and you was on the ground dead. According to him, he did all that to you. That man just slapped you and you won't let that go and you won't leave that alone. You supposed to be the ice queen or whatever. You supposed to be the one getting your revenge and all this. And how you gonna call that man off for cheating on you? First of all, let's get it right. If we gonna quote something verbatim, ver, ver, um, verbatim, let's say it right. You cheated on David first. David didn't cheat on you. You got more bodies than he can ever have. He only cheated on you one time with one person. You then cheated on him with Benny, gave for pay, Benny, Benny, gave for pay. You got so many bodies and had sex so many times just because he was having a relationship with Erica and trying to marry her or whatever, trying to start a new life with her. And then you're going to have a nurse that's going to talk about that man need a blood test. Really? A blood test? And you the queen of condoms? Okay. I believe that when it falls, I can throw you. You the queen of condoms. Did you have a condom on Benny Dick when you was up there sucking him in that car? You did that more than once. I know you ain't have no condom on that man thing while you was sucking him. You sit up here talking about what you the king, the what you the queen of. 
and you up here talking about what you doing, what you don't do, talking about his results, and he only had sex with one person. Yes, yeah, she was an escort. Yes, yeah, she slept with multiple people. I don't think she had nothing. You talk about he need a blood test, but what about you? Now, Veronica, I didn't say this on multiple videos on multiple times. I'm going to need for you to pick the pick a struggle. Either you going to be a victim or you going to be this ice princess that they call you or Veronica the bitch that they call you. Pick a struggle, my dear. Pick one and find one and hold on to it. You got what you deserve when that man slapped the hell out of you. You lucky that's all he did to you after you then about blow that man up in that car when you about shot burnt that man to death in that bed. You burnt him. You about blowed him up. You about, um, what else you did to him? I, I, I remember you burning him, about to burn him in that bed. I remember when you blowed him up in that car. You didn't try to attempt that man alive how many times now? And because he slapped the hell out of you, you sitting up here playing victim, talking about Eric perfume, Erica per perfume, and I still smell it, that cheap perfume and all this and all that, and take it back that you, that you want to kill me like Veronica Pick a struggle, my dear. Pick one, find one, and stick with it. That's all I'm going to need for you to do. Because you and these men are many victims you playing as, and all these men are victims you calling yourself trying to play as, I'm going to need for you to cut it the hell out because you as nobody victim, you far from a victim, and I'm going to need for you to stop and stop and cut it the hell out. Now that I got the demon off my back, Let's go ahead and get the Candace and Charles. And Candace basically scared to admit that she having fun with Charles. She like this new side of her. She enjoying herself. She smiling more, laughing more, having more fun. She's so used to being on her own, doing her own thing that she never had this much fun in her life. Not knowing that she put a ruined char um Charles um before he even get in office, there's a man or the people that's already in office ready to expose him and her for the escort she used to be. And a man don't really know his name, but he came to the um hotel getting ready to expose both of them and do an interview in the morning but i'm liking this new side of candace she cool or whatever i'm sorry she still having nightmares about her child but it got to come out like i don't think it can do, i don't think it can do nothing bad for her having these nightmares or whatever um Maybe to help her heal and be able to smile more loud, more like she doing now, whatever. So it ain't really much there with um Charles and Candace tonight though. But we got Catherine and um Catherine gave for pay. Why yeah, the hotel gave for pay, telling on himself and all that. So, Catherine, like I said, you still embarrassing yourself with these young behind men. This man basically playing the game on you, playing a con on you. You basically know what he doing, know what's going on. <sighs> Like, Catherine, you too old for all these games. And you sitting up there at your own hotel getting drunk off your own supply. Sitting up there about to fall off your behind. If it wasn't for, I think that's Oscar. I think that's Oscar, if I'm not mistaken. That's Oscar or the other man. I think that's Oscar. I'm not, not Oscar. It's his name, Oscar, whatever his name is, at the hotel. And then we got Gay for Pay basically spilling all his goods in front of the drunken Catherine, talking about Veronica, and he need a loan, but he can get Veronica back her money with her jewelry from the pawn shop that he then sold, trying to get some, where well, he did get some money off of it, and basically spilling his goods. Gus, not realizing that you messing with the wrong person, you playing with the wrong person, you dealing with a straight devil. Apparently, you like the thrill of having an older devilish lady that's going to kill you in 2.5 seconds or less. So, gave for pay, you was all over the place tonight. I mean, you was literally all over the place. Like, begging one of your, I think that's your balls. 
begging your boss or your employer for money, but you can get Veronica Jury out of the pawn shop, and then Catherine trying to exploit you and trying to make you back jealous, and um, I forgot the man named that's sleeping with uh, Catherine. I forgot his name. You playing a very dangerous game when it comes to Catherine. I guess you trying to play her or use her or whatever the hell you trying to get out of there, trying to make her jealous with other women. And she's sitting at that side eyeing you at the bar. Like, all y'all playing a very dangerous game. And gay for pay, you are amazed and shocked at anything. This a nice car. Oh, I love the car. This a nice car. Oh, this a nice house. Your house is fly. I like that. Like, you thirsty, why thirsty, you got even more thirstier than you walked in that house. Then you're going to have the audacity going to ask the woman, can you drive her car? She drunken out her darn mind, and she wouldn't let you drive. Thank God Jim came and caught you, and then Thursday Wyatt gave you the keys back, but you can drive the car on off because he want to use you to get some money. We well, to use you to get his drugs, but he can get high, basically depending on you, knowing darn and full, knowing full and darn well that if you get your behind in that car, you going for a draw, a draw ride for the rest of the night, and ain't no returning back, or he, well, he might come back when he done draw riding. He might come back. He might. And you might end up suffering even more than you suffering out over your coke. But once that man get his gas off his car in that expensive car, he might come back. He might. I ain't going to say he ain't going to come back because he want that money. So he might end up coming back. Uh, we got Catherine and Hannah, and basically she took the job, that hotel job, her being the manager of all the other people. She took that job for she can basically help Benny out with his no good behind, getting money for the mom, knowing that he couldn't pay back. So basically she accepted the job, and basically she asked by the interest, because she keep the interest, for, she can, for he can help well, for he can pay off the mom, and they can get off of his bag. And basically she told Jim that um, Catherine keeping all that money, and then he go running his happy behind down there. The Benny house calling himself, threatening him, telling him he got to the morning to have that money to him or basically he back on his behind and gonna end up killing him or whatever so like I said this episode was all over the place like why you still thirsty for you, st you still thirsty for a head Catherine around here embarrassing herself trying to have sex with anybody that's within the have sex with her trying to keep up with jam bodies, how many bodies he didn't got, and I guess she trying to get her stack of bodies too, like he got, and I guess she trying to make him jealous, which is working, and Jim, you can forget about that money, buddy, that ain't none of your money, that is Catherine money, like she said, you might got power for being a judge, her name carries weight in that town. That's her money because she was born with the silver spoon in her mouth. You think that's your money, but really in all seriousness, that's really Catherine money, not your money. She, You might have access to that money being married to her and her name in that money, but that's really her money and you ain't got no business with your old behind going around threatening people, talking about if you don't give me this money at a certain amount of time, you going to be dead and I'm going to kill you and I'm going to make sure I get this money back. Like, y'all two, and Catherine, stop talking about the voice. That's another thing I got to say. Stop talking about the voice. It's not going to happen. You need him as much as he needs you. You might hate the fact that you married to that old cheating, no good, pitiful looking man you married to. But he the one that keeps your behind for getting locked up, thanks to him. And basically, he compliments you by taking up all your well. He compliments you for keeping your behind out of jail. And basically, you compliment him by having all this money to go with his big powerful name in Georgia. So, y'all compliment each other. You ain't getting no divorce. 
He ain't leaving your behind. He like your money. He might not make love to you or make love to you when he want to make love to you. But you ain't going nowhere and he ain't going nowhere. Because without him, you're behind to be in jail and be locked up. So, Catherine, let's start with the divorce threats. Let's stop there. And with the divorce threats. Because you ain't going nowhere. And he'll make sure you ain't going nowhere. So, let's start with the whole, the, I want to divorce you, you bastard and all that other stuff you got to say. Cause it ain't happening. And Catherine, you was that darn jealous at the bar that you had to you got drunk off of your own behind, got drunk off of your own supply, ended up stumbling in your own house. You ain't even much make it to your door stuff and you already knocked out on the passenger side of the door. And he had to he had to basically you basically had to hold on to him, your big behind, just to get in your own house while you trying to seduce him and trying to sleep with this man, trying to make Jim jealous. And that wasn't enough to show you you was a darn fool getting caught by your husband and then getting caught by your son the same age as that boy. Well, that boy old enough to be your son and your oldest son is old enough to be his little brother, like big brother. So is that not enough to embarrass you about that being caught by your, your husband in your son, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you really need to have self receipt somewhere, Catherine. You two got darn old. You been trying to keep up with that and trying to do the stuff Jim did in his prime. Well, not his prime. Well, doing the stuff he was doing, you need to cut it out and you need to stop it. So, next episode, we are find out if Ben, I almost said Ben, is Jeffrey going to make it or no? Nah? And if he going to be good or is he going to be on live support and all that? So, anyways, though, y'all, that was the episode. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Enjoy the rest of y'all night. Bye.